I was seven years old. Michael asked, do you and the family want to come to Neverland? Two little boys drawn into the orbit of the biggest star in the world. Wade Robson was just five years old when he met the performer he already idolised after winning a dance competition. James Safechuck was nine when he appeared in a commercial with the star. Everybody wanted to meet Michael or be with Michael. And then he likes you. Though they never met, their stories ran in parallel. Disturbing accounts of young boys who say they were manipulated and abused by the king of pop. I spoke to both men and the director of the controversial documentary. Can you remember the first time you met Michael Jackson and, and what was going through your mind then? It was just all very exciting. He's the biggest star in the world. Michael, this otherworldly, incredible being, was now, you know, in the flesh, in front of me. And it, w it exploded my heart, it exploded my mind, and uh, it was just the most amazing thing in the world. Already enthralled to Michael Jackson, both describe being showered with love and praise and affection before it seamlessly turned into sexual abuse. Yeah, really quickly, he started being really affectionate with me and you know, just kind of touching me, putting his hand on my leg and lots of hugs and kisses on the head and telling me that he's just so happy that God has brought us together and, you know, two or three days before the abuse started. We had this mock wedding ceremony. It felt good, and the ring is nice. I was really into jewelry, and he would reward me with jewelry for doing sexual acts for him. You're pretty graphic about the nature of the abuse, and I wondered, was that so that you were quite clear to people this was absolutely sexual abuse? Oh, this was 100% graphic, disturbing, intense sexual abuse. Um, so, yeah, that, that, that had to be clear. I can just say, you know, for, for, for decades, Jackson put up this smokescreen, which was reinforced by, you know, his family and, and, and the media as well, that he had this innocent love for children. And I just needed to make it absolutely clear that what was happening in that bedroom behind closed doors between Michael and Wade and between Michael and James was sexual activity. It wasn't affectionate cuddling. Wade, you were only seven. Were you frightened? Were you alarmed? Could, could you even make sense of what he was doing to you? I didn't have a sense of normal anymore. And so anything that Michael Jackson wanted to do with me, that he had chosen me to do with, I was all in. You know, you're a little kid and you love this person and it's just this sort of, you know, he develops it, but it just feels natural the way he sort of guides you through it. And he also, you know, he makes you feel like you, you did it, you know, like you introduced him to it. And he reiterates that, I mean, over yeah. years and years, even as you get older, he would say, hey, remember when you taught me this or yeah. taught me that? It's yeah. like he just, he'll call up again and just like he keeps drilling that into you. Michael wanted to be with our family. This was all so overwhelming and like a fairy tale. And I got lost in it. He just came across as a loving, caring, kind soul. One of the other extraordinary things about the film, I think, is, is, is the focus on your mothers. Did they just miss what was happening or did they, they push it away? Did they deny it? She didn't think anything was happening. She was so blind, blinded by the light that was Michael. Uh, that she really had no idea. And does she deserve some fault for that and responsibility for that? Absolutely. Yeah, M Michael really grooms the parents as well as grooming the kids. And, um, you know, you, you love your child. And then when somebody who is so amazing, uh, the Michael was, and he's the biggest star, and he tells the parent that your child is special, look how talented your child is. Like, as a parent, I mean, that's, you know, you eat that up. The question facing the men is why now? As boys both spoke in the singer's defense when he faced abuse allegations in the 90s. Wade Robson defended him again in a court case in 2005, which exonerated Jackson of abuse. 
I couldn't speak the truth any earlier than I did. I wish I could have. I wish I was emotionally and mentally capable earlier than I was. There will be people who say, as your own family said years ago when people put allegations to uh, Michael Jackson, that this is about money. Yeah, people will say whatever they yeah. want to say. Yeah, that's an argument that the estate's been using successfully for, for many years. Um, but, you know, for, for me, fighting back for young James, uh, nobody fought for him as a kid, and now I'm old enough to take up that fight. Um, so win or lose, it, it's about fighting. Michael Jackson's family, you will know, have called this a public lynching, a one-sided marathon propaganda against an innocent man who's no longer able to defend himself. We've included Michael denying his guilt, that we've got three of his lawyers den rebutting the allegations of child sexual abuse. We've got fans in it. So it's disingenuous of the family and of the estate to say this is a one-sided documentary. It clearly isn't. And James and Wade, I, I wonder, is it enough to be heard? Is it important to be believed too? Because you'll know that there will always be people who refuse to believe any allegations against Michael Jackson. I, th I think being heard is, you know, probably one of the number one wants of a victim. But, you know, also, when all this goes away and the interest goes away, you know, we're still left with being abused. So much silence and so much isolation, which I experienced, James experiences, experienced, and most survivors experience. Um, so being heard uh, is a powerful thing. We can't control what people believe. That's up to mm -hmm. people's own journey.